You are now listening to Crypto Files, and if you're new to the channel, welcome aboard. If you end up liking the content, hit the like, subscribe, and the notification button. As the channel grows, I'll be uploading more videos, and I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who has subscribed to the channel. I am up to 89 subscribers, and that makes it 11 away from 100. That's a huge milestone, so thank you, thank you, thank you. Anything I say in this video or any of the content that I present is not to be taken as financial advice. I know I sound like a broken record, I say it in every video, um, but sincerely, this is not financial advice. Don't go trading your crypto or any of your NFTs based on my opinion or any of my content. This is purely for entertainment purposes. With that being said, today's topic is Polkadot. I recently made a video, and that was just yesterday, about the parachains crowd lending auctions. And I talked a little bit about Clover, and some of you, I was surprised how well the video did, and I got some comments, and that was pretty cool. So thank you all for leaving your comments, and it seemed like pe you know individuals enjoyed the video, so I thought I would make this one. If you haven't had a chance to really look at Polkadot and what it's all, you know, what is it and why is it completely different from Ethereum and Bitcoin? Well, let's go through it real quick and I hope I can give you a good example. And I know it might sound a little bit dumbed down of an example. To, you know, I'm going to try to avoid as many of the hardcore technical things that make this network and this blockchain so cool. But let's get to it. So I've said in the past that it looks like a Ferris wheel, right? Well, it's a big circle and the polka dot network is well it has a lot of components but number one is the relay chain and the relay chain is exactly this this circle it's a chain imagine it's a big chain and these are slots and these slots will be filled in with blockchains and why do you say that those are filled in with blockchains they often call polka dot the blockchain of blockchains why is that well let's talk about it we know Bitcoin, Bitcoin is just one huge chain and as it validates transactions and creates blocks, it just grows in one line, just linear. It grows and grows and grows. So if you laid out a blockchain on a table, it would just be one chain and it would have a bunch of blocks, right? Now, if you lay it down, that's one layer. So if you've ever heard of a layer one blockchain, that's what they're referring to the actual blockchain layer of itself, the first layer. So for example, we have Ethereum, that's a layer one blockchain. And we have Bitcoin, that's a layer one blockchain. Those are the first layers. The second layers are blockchains that run on top of that blockchain. That's why they're called layer twos. So it's not, it's not you know, nacho dip that we're talking about here where you just layer it but that that's a bad joke but um that's what they're talking about layer twos so why is it that we have layer twos well as we see layer one let's take uh, bitcoin for example as the transactions grow and more users come onto the network the network slows down it can't keep up because we all know that bitcoin is proof of proof of work so what, mean, what that means is that we require a bunch of computers to actually verify these transactions by solving the blocks. And the more transactions that come onto the network, then the more CPU and GPU power we need, so more computing power we need. What ends up happening is we end up with huge gas fees on networks like the Ethereum network, where you have smart contracts. And with the boom of NFTs and a lot of dApps that were actually created on the Ethereum network, there is a huge, huge need for these transactions to be verified. In order to keep up with all these transactions on the Ethereum network, the validator starts saying, okay, well, let's take, let's go ahead and have an auction here and say wh if whoever pays the most, we'll go ahead and, you know, supply classic supply and demand. Whoever pays the most, will get their order out first. And so we start to see these crazy gas fees go up in price. And the, you know, those transactions with the highest gas fees go out first and then they make their way through there. Well, layer twos are there to help out. They kind of say, hey, I'm here to help you out. And what type of transactions can I help you with? Well, take these 10 transactions, come back when you're done verifying them and they come back and report to layer one. And that has helped a lot of 
blockchains that you know we're looking at polygon helping ethereum we're looking at the lightning network helping bitcoin but even then sometimes that's just not enough this is what makes polka dot very very interesting we have the relay chain and we have a bunch of little blockchains and what's kind of cool about these blockchains is because they're running parallel with each other on these slots they become what's called a parachain so once they get on the ferris wheel and they have a slot they become a parachain and every parachain can actually communicate with another parachain and that is incredibly cool because they don't have to worry about security they don't have to worry about scalability that is all handled by the relay chain which is this big circle that is the heart of polka dot the relay chain is the heart of polka dot and so by providing this environment so I gave you the example of the table where we lay out the blockchain. Imagine that we're all playing poker and the parachains are friends that are trying to play poker. They pull up a seat, they join the environment that we're in for that night. We're playing poker and we're communicating. We're actually talking about conversations that we're having information and we're exchanging information. Some of that information is valuable. So if you have one blockchain across the network that you know has been built to keep track of you know bank statements or records that are happening on a financial system and let's say we have another blockchain that you know it's entirely just dedicated to approving credit loans and you know approving loans and they want to know if this individual has been making their payments on their mortgage they can run a you know messaging they can actually message the other blockchain and ask for information in regards to the user and if they're making their payments <clears throat> excuse me so that's another benefit to it because these parachains don't have to worry about so you know important things such as security scalability and you know really worrying about the through throughput of these transactions because it's all taken care of by the relay chain they can specialize in you know what they're good at so developers and engineers that are building these blockchains don't have to worry so much about security and optimization scalability and they can focus on the core features of that blockchain that make it specifically different from let's say ethereum where ethereum has a bunch of features that allow individuals to build dApps and it has to be a broad range of things with polkadot you can have a parachain that just does one specific thing and it's a specialized to just to do that so whoever's creating this new blockchain can actually have a you know they can bootstrap it pretty quick and that's the benefit of the polka dot ecosystem you and those parachains alone can have their own tokens it doesn't have to be a dot token they can have their own dApps that run on that specific parachain and um, all within the ecosystem or the relay chain of polka dot hosting it that's why they call it the blockchain of blockchains so it's super cool and as you can see in this specific graph uh, i'm sorry graph graphic um you see them communicating with each other right these lines i can only assume represent them communicating with each other and as you can tell these are parachains there is a lot more um in this diagram that i'll explain in other videos but we also have information coming from blockchains that don't um, belong to the parachain net, um, network here and these are called bridges which you know i'll explain in another video but that is the concept of polka dot now why is polka dot the actual token so so very important well as transactions are verified polka dot is staked with the relay chain and they're required by um you know in order to be hosted by the relay chain a lot of these parachains have to you know provide a good amount of polka dot and they'll go ahead and create what's called a crowd lending parachain auction and this is where individuals who own polka dot can actually lock up their polka dot fund these projects to be uh winners and have a slot to become a parachain and then um, those parachains often give rewards for individuals who have contributed to the crowd lending and that's why you see projects like moonbeam and like i'm sorry moon river which had also 
you know, has Moonbeam, but these projects actually, like yesterday I covered Clover and Clover was giving 18 Clovers per polka dot that you contributed. So oftentimes it's, you know, these projects will give you rewards to entice you to lend the, your polka dot so that they win a parachain auction. And that's why parachain auctions are a huge, huge deal. Now you may ask, well, how many slots are there? And this is what makes me so excited about Polkadot and I hear no one talking about it. And it says into the documentation that they can host up to a hundred slots, about a hundred slots, right? And so my question is what happens when they run out of slots? Well, there is a concept that they're researching that's called nested relay chains. And they can nest an entirely different relay chain that will communicate with this one and the pair chains as well. And they can, you know, uh, pretty much copy and paste another one that will be part of the ecosystem. This almost reminds me of Cadena. And I know a lot of you will get very offended by that statement, but this almost reminds me of Cadena where they've gone ahead and just added another chain, another chain, another chain, and they have up to 20 right now. So with the polka dot system, they can, you know, right now they're researching on how to have another nested relay chain. And that's going to make things very, very interesting as this ecosystem grows. And that in the nutshell, or the best way that I can describe it is what is so different about polka dot. And remember, it is a layer zero. It is the actual table on where the blockchain lays down. Um, then you have layer one which is like Ethereum, layer two, which is like Polkadot, and so on and so on. So very, very cool stuff. I know that was a lot to take in, and I hope I explained it correctly. I give myself a hard time whenever I try to explain technical things and try to make it as easy as possible. If you like the video, subscribe, hit the like button. Until next, next time, I hope you all stay safe. I'm looking into some of these uh, crowd lending projects, and I'll be covering a couple in a couple of days. Thank you, and have a great one.